Three and a half million Americans have epilepsy, leaving them prone to seizures without warning, sometimes minor, sometimes severe. So what if doctors could rewire their brains, so to speak, to help cut down on the number of seizures they have? Health editor Dr. Maria Simbra explores how an, how an old treatment for something else is giving people with epilepsy a new option. Crystal Niederreiter started having seizures at age 12. I've had people tell me I make like a weird noise beforehand. Then she falls and shakes, all unbeknownst to her. The episodes are unpredictable. At one point, we had them like every three days. One day, I had it three in an hour and a half. Like, and then there's the longest I've ever gone was six months. And they can be dangerous. It could just be, you know, in my bed, nice, safe. Or it could be walking down a street and chipping all your teeth. She's tried medication. So in total, I was probably on like four different medications throughout this time, but nothing like really stuck and nothing really worked. Doctors said adding more medication probably wasn't going to help, so she asked about surgery. A number of implants are available, but Crystal decided to go with a relative newcomer for epilepsy, deep brain stimulation. The deep brain stimulators for epilepsy were just FDA approved a little over a year ago. However, the technique has been used for Parkinson's disease for a few decades now, which is what appealed to Crystal. The only downside is it's brand new for epileptics. So there are some unknowns, but... It's exciting to be able to offer people another option. A seizure happens when brain cells fire abnormally all at once. The stimulator electrodes go into a structure deep in the brain called the thalamus. It's a big relay station for brain cells. The thought is impulses from the stimulator here will disrupt the seizure network. It's a pretty complicated process. It takes three surgeries under general anesthesia. One to mark where the electrodes will go, another to get the stimulator in place, and a third to put in the wiring and generator. The device then delivers constant stimulation, but patients barely notice. Honestly, they don't notice a lot. They don't feel the stimulator uh, when it's on. The device is available only in select centers. Doctors check scans during the operations to make sure everything is in the right place. After that, it's wait and see. Six months is probably a reasonable amount of time to see if there's a difference in terms of their um, seizure frequency. It will decrease seizure frequency for most patients, but not for everybody. Regardless if a patient has fewer seizures with the stimulator, it does not eliminate the need for medication. The likelihood of being seizure-free with a stimulator alone is uh, pretty small. And eventually, the batteries will have to be changed. But overall, doctors say any risks to getting a stimulator are minimal. Crystal now has all the hardware in place. Because I don't have one specific area where I have seizures, so we put it in the center of my brain. They were holes in your head. I didn't feel really pain from the device or anything. I mean, a little sore from the stitches, but for the most part, I didn't feel a whole lot of pain throughout the process. She's healing nicely, and at her next appointment, her doctor will program the stimulator. She hopes she can get enough relief from the seizures to be able to drive and work. She had been studying at Slippery Rock to become an interpreter for the deaf, but she put that on hold until she sees if this treatment works for her. If they know that I have seizures, they're not going to want you to sit there and be the interpreter knowing that there's the risk of you sitting there and not being able to follow through with your job. I'm hoping that it can help me like gain more independence, like being able to not have to choose where I'm going to live based off of a transit system. And most importantly, she hopes the device changes her life. I'm Dr. Maria Simbra, KDKA News.